In another video, I created a skeleton that contained a shrink wrap feature that referenced geometry from a higher level assembly. But sometimes when you create a skeleton, it'll only have native geometry, geometry that is created inside of that skeleton. That's what I'm going to do in this video. So first off, I'm creating a new assembly. I'll click the new button and choose assembly. And this is going to be for a transmission. And so my assembly is created. Now let's make our skeleton model. I'll click the create button and skeleton is selected. I'm happy with that file name, so I'll click OK. And I'll use my standard start part. And my skeleton is created. And I could either activate it or just open it up and start creating geometry. First off, let's turn on my datum plane visibility and my datum axis display. I'm going to need both of those. And my model is in inches and I realize, hey, wait, you know, I'm going to be designing this uh, for some overseas suppliers, international suppliers, so I should be using the metric system. So I can go to my model properties, which I have in my quick access toolbar. And for units, let's change it. I wanna use millimeter Newton seconds. And the conversion method doesn't matter because I don't have anything in here yet. All right, so now that I have my model started, first thing I'm going to put in here are some datum planes for reference. And the first one for my transmission, I'm going to locate the extent of the pinion. So to create a datum plane, I'll click on the plane icon, pick the reference, and I can start dragging it out over here. I actually want it a distance of 238. And always a good idea to rename your datum feature so people know what they're doing. Hit the OK button. And there's my first datum plane. I want some more datum planes, so at this point I'm going to create them, but I'm going to edit out the video right here so that you're not too bored. All right, so I have my datum planes created. You can see that I also have bearing carrier, spacer plate, and coupling. Next up, let's create a datum axis for reference. I'm gonna start creating the geometry for the lay shaft. And so to create an axis, I'll click on the axis tool. And this one is just going to be at the intersection of the datum planes front, and I'll hold down the control key to select top as well. And for clarity, I'm going to rename this to my lay shaft axis and click OK. So now I'm going to create the geometry for the lay shaft and I'm going to sketch on the datum plane called coupling. Click the sketch button and let's change to our sketch view. And this shape is just going to be a circle and it's gonna have a diameter of 71.5. I'll hit the check mark and I'm going to extrude this. Let's flip the direction. And I'm going to use a depth of 3.5. And right now, this would be generated as a solid feature. If you have any solid geometry in a skeleton model, it's not going to affect the mass properties of your assembly. But personally, I prefer to extrude as solids, or excuse me, as, as surfaces when I'm creating a skeleton model. And if you go to the Options tab, since we're generating this as a surface, we have an option to cap the ends, which will make it look solid, but it'll actually be hollow on the inside. I'll hit the, oh, before I hit the check mark, I always like to change the names of my features. And this one will just be the lay shaft and hit the check mark. And so there we have the first surface geometry in the model. For the pinion shaft, I'm gonna create another axis. And so I'm gonna make this axis and I'm going to locate it on the datum plane right, but I'm going to locate it distances from the datum plane's top and front. And from front, 
It's going to be offset just a short distance, but a little bigger offset from top. Oops, wrong direction. Let me flip it. And again, let's rename this. Okay, the next shaft, since it's the pinion, I'm going to sketch on the pinion plane. And for my references, I'm going to add in the axis. And then sketch my circle. Change the value. Hit the check mark to complete the sketch. And I'm going to extrude this one. Let's flip the direction. And use a value of 350. And there we can see that there's a little bit of interference and that represents how the gears are going to uh, intersect each other. And again, I like to generate this as a non-solid feature and cap the ends. Change the name of the feature. Right. Call pinion extrude. Oh, yeah, I named a datum plane called pinion. Hit the check mark, and there we have our next feature. The next surface is going to be a revolve. To do that, I'm going to create uh, another datum axis and a couple more planes and some geometry. So I'm going to go and cut the video right here and jump back after that stuff is created. So now I have my skeleton geometry, and as you can see, it's a lot of datum features. You can have planes, axes, points, uh, coordinate systems. You can have other sketches, and you can have non-solid surface features. Basically, any geometry that's going to affect multiple components or where you want to control interfaces or define split space claims, you can set up in your skeleton model. In another video, I had showed how to create a published geometry feature, so that's something I could do at this point as well. For example, I could go to the Model Intent drop-down menu and choose Publish Geometry, and then select the surfaces that I want. And if I wanted any edge chains, I could select them. Or for any references, hey, let's go ahead and grab maybe that axis and another plane, and another couple of planes. And these are all related to the differential. So I'm gonna call this, I like to call them PG underscore, and then what they control. And I'll hit the check mark. And now I have my skeleton model. I can go back to the assembly. And inside of here, then we could start creating the individual components. And then those components could create copy geometry features either to a published geometry or actual skeleton geometry. And I hope this demystifies the whole concept of skeletons. Sometimes people get really wrapped up, unsure about, hey, what's everything that should be in a skeleton? And it's basically whatever you need to define your assembly. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video and want to see others, please hit the subscribe button so you can be informed whenever new videos are created.